Hey, welcome to my studio here in New York City. I'm Daniel Norton with Cadence. And today we have another short kind of technique video. I want to talk a little bit about the inverse square law. If I can figure out how to do it, it'll go across the screen, the math right now. Okay, so people talk about it all the time. It's almost like a, like a running joke for photographers. I was like, inverse square law. But what it basically means is that light falls off really quickly. It's not like even. So when you get something close to the light, you it's very bright. And when something's further from the light, it's not as bright. I guess that's pretty much common sense, right? And we can use this to our advantage to control our environment. And that's where I want to show it because where this becomes really relevant is when you want to uh, keep, separate your lights into zones, keep them separate, stuff like that. So we're going to just go really simply with one light and I'm just going to kind of show you how this works by moving myself and Cadence but keeping the light in the same spot. I'm going to just make a shot of her in TTO, which is through the lens metering, and we should get a dark-ish background, right, because she's close to the light and she should be well exposed. So let's see. So she can go there. And actually, what I'm going to do just to really am amplify this, I'm going to put the light as close as I possibly can without getting it in the shot, which is generally a good solution for portrait lighting, right? Because we want soft light and the closer is softer, generally. All right, I'm in TTL, so we'll get an exposure here. And we can see that, just like I said, even though you can see in the video that the wall is white, what we see here is the wall is dark, relatively speaking, because the light is closer to the cadence, right? Simple as that. Now, if she moves away from the light and closer to the wall, so let's say go to maybe that one halfway point where that little line is. Yeah, there we go. Somebody, when they built the studio years ago, was smart to put those lines there. <laughs> so I'm just going to move forward as well. Again, my distance, because I've had this question before. People question the camera distance. My distance to her doesn't matter. So we're in TTO. We may have to adjust its, its, you know, its angle slightly. We can see that now... Right, a couple things are happening. It's a, it, the TTL made it slightly underexposed, which isn't really a big deal, but we can see that the light is a little bit harder and flatter. It looks kind of like the boom, boom, like she's been at some nightclub or something, and I took a quick shot of her, like a paparazzi. We can see the background is now kind of a middle gray, right? Because now the ratio, right, of, of the distance between the light and cadence is, has been stretched out, right? So now instead of being, you know, one to 12, right, we're talking about like, almost one to one because we're looking at six feet behind or six feet forward. Now, if she goes all the ways to the wall, and again, I'll go with, keeping it relatively framed the same way. Now, granted, there's gonna be a shadow on the wall here. And because TTL has a hard time with this kind of setup, I'm gonna to switch to manual now and I'm just gonna turn the light up all the way. That should give us the exposure we need. I may or may not have tested that already. Here we go. And we can see that you know, now our wall is basically white, right? It's not stark white because the wall's not stark white even till life, but it's white, right? So this is all the, the same exposure, meaning that my camera's set the same. The only thing that's changed is the power of the light and the ratio of the distance between the light and cadence. And this is effectively how the inverse square law works. What that means that if I want the background to be uh, the, the color it is, and I only have one light, I have to put my subject close to it. If I want to eliminate as much light as possible on the background, put the light close to the subject, move them away from the background. So for me, uh, my, the most pleasing and, and generally for me is going to be the first one because that creates a bit of a softer light, a little bit more contrast, but also it gives me control of the background. So let's go back to that original position. Now obviously angle of the light and stuff makes a difference as well as far as how much light hits the background. You know, all of this plays in. And here we have a nice dramatic light again, darkish gray background, and that's all has to do with the inverse square law. So hopefully that was helpful. I'll put Cadence's information in the description below. You guys can follow her, follow me here, Daniel Norton Photographer. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.